I'll start, I'll start from the very beginning again. Okay, then we are very happy to, to, to have a meal. Dimitri is famous in mathematical physics. Many come from the relation group theory, but then he become interested by this story of information and complexity, and then he will give us this lecture. So, welcome, Dimitri. You can start. So, th thank you. Uh, and uh, as I was saying before, I apologize for not being there in, in prisons because uh, uh, I had some personal problems. And uh, I thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak anyway uh, through the web. Uh, so I'll speak about information and complexity and uh, the uh, problem of information, the statement of the problem is the following. We have a, suppose that we have a random variable that takes uh, outcomes in uh, some finite alphabet, uh, capital X. Uh, so capital X can be anything you can imagine. It can be uh, the zero one set bits. It can be uh, the uh, normal alphabet. It can be uh, the uh, uh, alphabet of the uh, genetic codes or everything, any finite set that you can imagine. And the uh, problem of information is engineering problem how to efficiently convey a message from a sender to the receiver without uh, 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 paying any attention to the semantics of the, of the message. Uh, for uh, the engineer, the, the, uh, whether it is a bit sequence or it's an alphabet, a, a written, a written uh, letter uh, of, on, on the normal uh, alphabet, this is totally, uh, uh, Irrelevant. And in uh, 1948, uh, Shannon proposed a definition of information content of images as being the decrease of uncertainty uh, when the uh, random variable, uh, the outcome of the random variable is revealed. What does it mean? Uh, it means the following uh, before uh, the uh, outcome is revealed, the only thing you know about the random variable is maybe it's low. Uh, after the uh, outcome of the random variable is, is revealed, then you have a, a precise value for the random variable. Uh, the, uh, uh, so the, uh, the uh, uh, uncertainty you have before the, random, the outcome is revealed is maximal. And when you uh, uh, take out the, uh, you, you, uh, you are communicated the, uh, the outcome of the random variable, this uh, 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 uncertainty comes, becomes zero. So the information is a probabilistic notion and concerns ensembles of messages. It, it cannot be, uh, uh, thought about in individual messages. That's the first point. The second point is that this quantity of information that uh, Shannon proved uh, in 1948 as being the uh, information content is, was already known uh, practically three quarters of a century before uh, because Boltzmann in 1877, had already introduced this, uh, this notion as the thermodynamic entropy. It was published only much later in the 1896, but uh, it, it was known already uh, earlier. And uh, she introduced this quantity of entropy to, uh, to explain the microscopic, uh, microscopic reversibility, despite that microscopic uh, uh, gas is uh, governed by reversible in time equations. So that's about information. So what is complexity? Complexity is an algorithmic notion that uh, concerns individual messages. So the, uh, this, has been, this notion has been in, independently introduced by Solomonov, Kolmogorov and Chaitin uh, almost uh, simultaneously uh, by so Solomon. Dimitri, yeah? Dimitri, sorry, it's Rafael. Can you use full screen? Because here it's not so big for the students. 
Uh, can I use? Can you use a full screen uh, écran, the grand écran? Yeah, a, a full screen, yeah. Because here it's not so big for the students. So we have yeah, a little, yeah. we have not a big. You're right, you're right, you're right. I, I don't want to use full screen for uh, some very peculiar reasons because I'm using this uh, 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 open uh, open board uh, thing, and with the open board I can write on the transparencies. Ah yes yes yes. yes. Uh, so uh, uh, you uh, can you can you see up up to here? Can you see up to here? Yeah yeah. Okay, so you, essentially you have the whole the whole screen. Is it is it okay if I continue like that? Yes, yes, we, we yeah. will try like this. It's, it's fine. We will match. Pause. We, we can put our screen more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's better. Yeah. One second, we will try to put our screen as good. So I can I can continue like that? Yeah, yeah. That's... One moment, one moment. No, Alexander. The what The what The view button. The what The what I copied Dimitri for tell you that there is a 30 students which are online, which are not here. So they can interrupt you. I will tell you because I'm not sure that you, I'm not sure that you see the, when they ask questions, these online students. So when they ask questions, I will tell you. OK. OK. So you. here we are 20 students and online 30. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, the uh, complexity is uh, thought as being the length of the shortest program from which a random sequence can be reproduced. Uh, this is a com uh, uh, concerns individual sequences and it's also known as algorithmic information. Now, what is important is that the two notions of entropy and complexity are closely related because for uh, some special class of processes that are called ergodic processes, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it later in, the, in this course, the complexity per symbol is equal to the entropy per symbol. So in fact, these two, um, totally uh, uh, independent notions of complexity and deformation coincide. If you uh, look at, at uh, long sequences and you see uh, the uh, content of information of complexity per symbol. So the plan of the course is the following. In the first uh, lecture and maybe uh, part of the second uh, lecture will be uh, uh, devoted to the basic, basic postulates uh, of uh, um, uh, information, its definition, its significance, and some properties of the information content, and then we shall speak about related functions. Uh, the second uh, course will be devoted to source coding and uh, to uh, compression algorithms, and the third uh, will be considered uh, will be concerned with channel coding and. Uh, we saw this especially stately fundamental theorem of information transmission. And the final talk will be about uh, Kolmogorov complexity, Turing machines, uh, and uh, Turing machine description of information content. So that's the plan. So let's start about uh, information. So how to define it? So you, you, you uh, consider a random variable taking values in some finite alphabet. And the law of the random variable is the probability that it takes outcomes small x. So I uh, the, just uh, a notation. So x like that is the alphabet. x like that is the random variable. And small x is the value of the random variable the value it takes, the outcomes of the random variables. So small x are the elements of capital X, of this x. Small x is, are elements of this set, of this alphabet. And so the law is determined by uh, what is called the probability vector. That means for every small x, you know 
some number. So this number uh, will be positive, non-negative in, in, in fact, and the sum over all axes must be equal to one. So this is what is called the probability vector. Now assign to uh, every event, that means this set here, uh, to every event, a, a quantifier uh, of the decrease of uncertainty of this event. So I call it small h, this uh, quantifier. So before the random variable has been observed, you have a maximal a priori uncertainty. I, is what I was saying before, the only thing you may know is the probability distribution, the, the vector p uh, governing the law of the random variable. And so uh, suppose that the, uh, the law is uh, uniform uh, over axis. So all the axis have the same probability. You have a maximal um, uh, uncertainty before the random variable has been observed. But after the observation, the uncertainty is zero because you have no uncertainty. If, uh, uh, if before the, uh, the coin is tossed, it can be zero or one. But once the coin is tossed, it is either zero or one exclusively. So the, there is no, uh, no uncertainty when the, the coin is tossed. Uh, so uh, since the afterwards, uncertainty is zero. That means that the reduction of uncertainty is only the a priori uncertainty. Now, intuitively, the uncertainty of an event is a function of the probability vector. So if uh, uh, the, uh, the, it, uh, it depends on, on the small x. And now uh, define for a fixed uh, event, a subset of x, uh, having some given probability, maybe call it Q, not, not to confuse with, with P, so it's better to call it Q. Uh, and the uh, H will be a function of this. Uh, and the, the, uh, for the moment, I don't know this function. It's just a small, uh, I, I write as a small H, I don't know this, uh, this, uh, this function. But uh, this function depends heavily on x, heavily on q, and so it's not uh, very convenient to use it. So it's better to use the, the function capital H, that is the expectation of small h. Uh, that means the capital H will be uh, the average with respect to the uh, probability vector of h px. Is it clear? We have some. Is it not that? Maybe reply would be appreciated. Maybe basic questions are important. Yeah, basic is a very important. Because otherwise, we won't follow. Sorry. Uh, that is one question. Uh, quick, quick. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm Juan. Um, sorry, could you please repeat the um explanation of why we do uh why reduction of uncertainty is equal to a priori okay say, say it again uh, uh, consider a concrete example suppose that uh, the random variable you you have is just head or tails so the the, the random uh, system you have is x equal to zero one right and with probability of zero equal to probability of one equal to one half. So you have a, 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 you have a, a honest coin. So before uh, you uh, toss the coin, the only thing you know is this probability vector. So you have 50% chance to have zero, 50% uh, uh, chance to have one. So the, you have a maximal uncertainty about the outcome. But once you have tossed the coin, you know that this is either zero or one exclusively. It, it, when you toss the coin, the, the coin uh, shows up a face and you know whether it's uh, uh, zero or one. 
So the uncertainty you have afterwards is zero. So if you uh, uh, make the, the, so the decrease of the uncertainty is the uncertainty before, minus the uncertainty after, but this is already zero. So the, the reduction of uncertainty is equal to the a priori uncertainty. Is it clear now? Yes, thank you. You are welcome. Now, uh, fix uh, the uh, cardinality of X to be some integer M, capital M. And right provisionally, because I, I, I drop this, uh, this notation uh, just afterwards, the, uh, uh, the uh, expectation of small h of the uncertainty as capital H indexed by the, the number of the uh, uh, elements of this set X. Now, uh, some uh, totally uh, intuitive uh, 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 intuitive uh, idea is that it's much easier to correctly guess the outcome of, the, of a coin tossing than the outcome of number a number lottery. So in an, 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 a, 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 when you toss a coin, so you have just two possible outputs, zero or one. But if you uh, choose six numbers among 49, as happens to a number lottery, you have one possibility over uh, 13 millions to uh, get the correct answer. So it's much easier to guess the outcome of a, of a coin. So if I, if I tell you that the outcome will be zero, even if I don't know the outcome, I have only 50% chance to be uh, wrong. But if I take that the output of the uh, number number lottery will be the numbers 5, 7, 8, 18, and so on. I have only one chance of the 13 millions to be correct. So intuitively, it's easier to guess uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, outcome of the tossing than the number lottery. And so a, a, a very uh, normal postulate will be uh, the uh, postulate of monotonicity. If I denote Fm to be the uncertainty of a, uh, a set of m, uh, of cardinality m, and I use the vector one over m for every x. So x here will be one up to m, so it has cardinality m. And the uh, probability vector I, I take is the, just the uniform vector. So every outcome has probability of one over m to occur. So that's the, the notation here. And th so I am considering the average of the uh, uncertainty uh, 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 in, in this situation. This will be a function only of m. So the, uh, the uh, uh, since I have this observation, that means the uh, function f is strictly increasing. So it's a very reasonable postulate. So this is the postulate of monotonicity. So that's the first postulate uh, for the uh, 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 information. Sorry, Dimitri? Yes? Yeah, I, I, can, can you go back to the, yeah. What, sorry, I got lost. What is HM? It's just we rename the the. Yes, I re I rename I rename HP. So H okay. HM HM P is just the H sum over X. Okay. Now it's from one to M. Okay. P of X H of P of X. I, I just, I just, uh, it's, the, it's the thing I, I had uh, not, uh, denoted like that previously, but now I precise provisionally the number of the, uh, the, the cardinality of the set on which I'm working on. It's just a, a difference of notation, not, nothing else. So this is to remember that this refers 
to a set of cardinality m. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. Thank you. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. So in the, the previous page, we did not fix the cardinality of the... Here I fixed nothing. The cardinality is, 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 is uh, totally uh, unfixed. So I have a sum over all x. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. So this is only a pre precision of notation. And it will be only provisional because I, I, I'll drop this M later on. But for the moment, I keep it. So is it clear now? Yes. So uh, do you agree that this function, because of this observation, must be increasing function on, on M? The bigger this, the set of outcomes, the uh, bigger is the uh, uh, reduction of uncertainty if I know the answer. Uh, nobody, <laughs> no. No. nobody yeah. reacts. So is it? Is, no, no, it's okay? Is it okay for somebody? Uh, there is still a question here? Apparently, everybody is okay. Uh, I, I, I missed your... Apparently, everybody is okay. Everybody is okay. Okay, thank you. So now the second postulate. So suppose that uh, I have now two independent uh, variables, X and Y, that are uniformly distributed over sets X and Y. And I suppose that the set X has cardinality L, if, uh, the set Y has cardinality M. So the, the uh, composite experiment will be uh, described by a random variable uh, that will be the pair of X and Y and uh, taking values in the uh, Cartesian product of X and Y. And so the cardinality will be L times M. Uh, now, if the outcome of X is revealed, the uncertainty of Y remains unaffected uh, because uh, the variables are supposed to be independent. So, uh, the, however, the uncertainty of the, of the pair is decreased from F of L times M to FL. So the next postulate is a very natural observation is that for all uh, integers L and M bigger than one, uh, the uh, uncertainty, the average uncertainty on the, uh, of the pair is the sum of uncertainties for the independent of, of, of the uh, elements of the pair. Is it clear for this postulate? Yes. Yes. Okay. And can you repeat the last uh, sentence you said, please? So, uh, uh, I, you want me to repeat the uh, meaning the of the last reasoning? The last reasoning you made. Yeah. So, uh, when I, I look at the pair of variables x and y, the uncertainty for the outcome. Sorry, uncertainty for the outcome of the pair is f of l and times m. Now, uh, since uh, when I uh, uh, reveal you the outcome of x, the uh, the uncertainty has uh, decreased by f l. That means that um, if I uh, the, the, this uh, uh, product, this uh, uh, function of the product, can be written as the sum of the functions of the individual terms. So if uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uncertainty for the couple is the sum of the uncertainties for the uh, components of the, of the, uh, of the couple. Okay. Now a third postulate. Now the idea is to relax the uniformity of the distribution because up to now we have considered only uniform pro probabilities. But now suppose that you have an arbitrary probability vector on X. That means the only thing you know is that this uh, P of X is positive 
and the sum is equal to one, nothing else. It, is not, it, it must, must not be the same for every X. Uh, now uh, partition the set capital X to two disjoint sets X1 and X2. I suppose that these sets are uh, non-empty. Both of them are non-empty. And uh, consider QI, the uh, sum of the uh, uh, probabilities in the set I. So QI will be the probability of the set X1, P, Q1 will be the probability of the set X1, and Q2 will be the probability of the set Q2, uh, X, X2. And now uh, split the experiment into two steps. What does it mean that P is equal to uh, uh, P of capital X to be equal small x? What is the probability? This probability can be written as the conditional probability to, to get small x knowing that x is inside x1 times the probability of x1 plus the probability of uh, conditional probability of getting small x knowing that the x is in, uh, pro in, in the set uh, small uh, x2 times this probability. Uh, so uh, uh, the um, <clears throat> conditional probability is uh, the conditional probability written here is the probability of getting X divided by the probability of the set here. So Q1, is it, is it clear? So that what I'm writing here is that probability of X, small X, given that X is in X1, is the probability of uh, x equal to small x okay there's a question in the chat yeah do we partition x in any way we like anyway Uh, absolutely no. Uh, the only the only thing you have to to check is that the probability of the sets x one and x two is not zero. Just to be able to divide by z by by q one, nothing else. Okay. And so you you get uh, this expression for for the uh, probability. So the probability, if if you do this, if you do this experiment. Sorry. If you do this experiment, uh, the uh, computing the probability directly or computing the probability through the uh, uh, form formula of the total probability is just the same. And now, now I come back to, uh, to the uh, uncertainties uh, 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 that are associated with the uh, uh, probability vectors. So here, X has uh, cardinality M. So I'm looking at the uh, uncertainty of this vector for M. Now I use uh, this uh, decomposition so this is the composition means that I have to split Q1. This will be the uncertainty of M1 corresponding to the vector P restricted to X1. So what does it mean? So if I have, suppose that I have uh, X to be one, two, three, four, five with P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 as probability vector. Now, suppose that I have a split to X1 that is one, two, and X2 that is the rest, three, four, five. So uh, what will be the restriction of P to X1? It will be just the vector uh, one, uh, so P1, P2. 
and P restricted to X2 will be P3, P4, P5. So you see that this will be a two component vector because X1 is uh, just a two uh, element set. And this will be a three component vector because this is uh, a set with three elements. And so that, uh, you have this decomposition. So up to here is clear. It's just the trans translation of the, uh, of the uh, uh, total probability. But there is still an uncertainty. And the remaining uncertainty is that we have introduced now uh, somehow a, a, an additional uncertainty. You don't know whether you are in X1 or in X2. And uh, the probability of getting X1 is Q1, and the probability of getting uh, X2 is Q2. So you have to add this uh, additional uncertainty. So the uncertainty you had originally can be decomposed in that way. So this is the postulate of grouping. Is it clear or not? So what's the meaning exactly of H2? I mean, it's like a uh, overlapping uncertainty maybe? No, no. Uh, so th this, this is the uncertainty of this probability. This is, will be another probability vector. This is a probability vector. I, I know. I know. It is a no. I mean, that, okay. that, that so you are, you're asking about yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, this is the uncertainty of choosing X1 and X2. So oh, okay. still, still uh, a two set uh, uh, out possible outcome. And this two po uh, set possible outcome has probability Q1 of Q2 to, to occur. This is exactly these things here. OK, perfect, perfect here. And the last postulate is just a technical one. I have no uh, 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 intuitive uh, explanation for this, is that uh, H2 has a smooth dependence on P. That means the uncertainty is not jumping uh, without, uh, it, 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 it um, uh, behaves continuously with respect to the uh, value of P. So uh, with this four postulates, uh, uh, Shannon proved the following thing that is very uh, astonishing, is that the unique function that verifies the four previous postulates is the function that can be written like that. So uh, C is an arbitrary constant. And uh, the logarithm here, is a logarithm in arbitrary basis. Uh, so it can be uh, decimal or it can be uh, uh, binary or it can be uh, the basis of uh, natural logarithm or anything you like. Now, uh, this set here is the set of probability vectors of dimension M. So this PVM is just the set of vectors with M components that are positive and such that the sum of the components is equal to one. So this set is called PVM, is the set of probability vectors of dimension M. So I'll, I'll, I'll take some time to prove the, the theorem in a moment. But the remark, uh, I have to make a remark that H depends on the probability vector, that means the, the low of x, not x itself. Nevertheless, uh, very often in uh, information theory, we write, we write h of x to denote h of p, where p is the low of x. So it's just an abuse of notation that we have to, to have in mind. Uh, this is not a uh, very uh, important thing. So, uh, I, I'll spend some time to uh, prove this theorem because this is really instructive and it's not, it's not difficult. So we have to prove
we have to prove that h of p is minus sum px log of px. So first remark is that if I have uh, numbers a and b bigger than one and x strictly positive, the logarithm in base a of x is logarithm in base a of b plus uh, times logarithm in base b of x. So this is a constant that does not depend on x. So uh, I can use an arbitrary basis for the logarithm because, uh, sorry, here's a constant. I can use an arbitrary uh, basis for the logarithm because the, the, uh, the difference uh, uh, in the logarithms can be absorbed in this constant here. Uh, in fact, in uh, probability, in, in information theory, we use as a basis the binary basis, so the logarithm basis two, and in physics, we use the natural logarithm. Log uh, the uh, this will uh, has nothing uh, uh, fundamentally different. Uh, now, uh, the, the proof of the theorem is split into several steps. So the step one is the following. For integers, m and k bigger than one, by the uh, extensivity postulate, postulate, we have that the F, what I called F before, so this is the H of MK. Uh, it can be read, this is uh, trivially written as M times m k minus one. And uh, because of extensivity, this will be, sorry, it's not, it's just equal, equal to f of m plus f of m k minus one. And so you can iterate, and then you get that f of m k, it will be k times f of m. So uh, the uh, uncertainty of uh, k uh, realizations of the uh, of the of the randomness will be k times the uh, uncertainty for one. So that's the first step to prove this uh, theory. Is it clear? Yes. So uh, the the second step is the following. We shall show that for integer m bigger than one, for any integer bigger than one, there is a constant such that f of m is equal to c times log m. So start with m equal to one. So yes, m equal, like, sorry? For m, no, what is that, a c? Uh, uh, for m bigger than one, Yes. That is in integer. M is integer. Yes. And the following inequality, I, I don't I cannot read the following. Okay, so for integer uh, M bigger than one. So you, you speak about this symbol? Uh, okay, uh, now I can read. Okay, okay, thank you. There exists mm -hmm. 
exists a constant, positive constant, such that fm is uh, c times logarithm of m. So for m equal to one, uh, I have f1 is equal to f1 times one. That means f1 plus f1 by extensivity. And so the only solution is uh, uh, f1 is equal to zero. So this is by extensivity. So the, uh, this equation is okay for m equal to one. Now, suppose that I, I have proven this uh, equation star to be true up to some m. That means f of m will be equal to c log m. Uh, so m bigger than one. Now for every integer, r, r bigger than one, there exists an integer k bigger than one, such that m k will be uh, less than two to the power r, less or equal to m k plus one. Uh, and one of these inequalities will be necessarily strict. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, uh, I use the monotonicity postulate. To say that f of mk will be less than f of two to the power r, less than f to the power mk plus one. And now uh, I have already shown that this will be k times f of m will be so less than r f of two less than k plus one f of m. In other words, I have shown that k over r will be f two over fm will be less than k plus one over r. So I can divide here because uh, uh, fm, f, sorry, m, I, here I have supposed to be strictly bigger than one. And since f is strictly increasing, uh, I, this will be non-zero, so I can divide. Is it clear? So on the other hand, uh, logarithm is also strictly increasing in an arbitrary base. <clears throat> so that means that k, I can write that k over r less than logarithm of two over logarithm of m less than k plus one over r. And again, one of these inequalities will be strict. Now, uh, if I'm looking on the, uh, this inequality and the inequality here, Uh, I'm not sure about Dimitri, sorry, about yeah. this step because I don't see why the monotonicity of the logarithm can be applied to maintain the, the sense of the inequalities. Because it's an, an intermediate value between the two limits, right? 
No, I, uh, so this, this inequality comes from, from this thing here. So we have uh, M of K. From the first one, we, we no? okay. And so I take, take logarithm, since logarithm is an increasing function, I take logarithm of, of this inequality and it remains still in inequality. So it's ah, K okay. M will be less than R logger less than k plus one log m right okay, no, I so I divide that. divide nine by log m and you get this inequality i know i know uh, thanks i was i thought that you were applying the the, the monotonicity uh, just in the no, no, uh, I, no, I'm in the monotonicity of uh, in this inequality for the logarithm function. Not perfect, for perfect. perfect, thanks. Okay, so uh, so consider now the the uh, the inequality I have shown in the last page for f, and to consider this inequality. So I have an interval that is. K R, K plus one R. And I have two numbers, logarithm two over logarithm F M, some, somewhere there. And I have also from the previous inequality, I have some other number, some somewhere in the, in the interval. So the, uh, the net effect of this is that I, I'm looking now at the difference of this two numbers here, these two numbers. Cannot differ by more than the length of this interval. So this will be one over, over R because the length of this interval is one over R. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I have one question. Yeah, you have a question. Uh, uh, at the beginning of the program, uh, um, uh, uh, can, can you sorry? Can you speak a little more loudly because I cannot hear you? Um, I didn't understand the log. Uh, the base of a of x uh, is equal to log a b uh, multiplied by log b of x. So you, you speak about that? Yes. Yeah. So for instance, if I have uh, if I have uh, a equal to ten and uh, b the uh, uh, the number e. If I am looking at the uh, uh, logarithm base ten of x, this is uh, uh, so. Suppose that uh, suppose that this number is y. What does it mean? That means uh, that x is ten times ten to the power of y. Right. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. So now I have X is 10 to the power of Y. So suppose now that I compute the logarithm uh, at the base E of X. This will be logarithm base E of 10 to the power of Y. But this is nothing else that the logarithm base E of 10 logarithm of base e of uh, uh, sorry uh, of um, uh, log, uh, log 10 of y but uh, sorry
Ja. Zo. Ja. Yes. Ja. Misschien? Yes. How can we do? Sorry. Hey, we don't see some new during two minutes. Uh, I have to stop in two minutes. No, 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 no. We we don't listen you. We don't hear you during the last. You don't. You don't listen. Okay. Yeah, but we are. We are twenty minutes. Don't worry. Twenty minutes. Uh, twenty minutes. Yeah. Okay. Thirty. 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 Okay. Ah, okay, okay. So if you take this logarithm out, then you get that this will be a logarithm of uh, e, uh, logarithm 10 of x will be logarithm 10 of e times logarithm uh, uh, e of x. So uh, that's the, uh, you can always change uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, logarithm basis without problem. I don't know whether I have answered to your question or not. Okay. So we have proven so that uh, uh, the difference between the ratio F2 over Fm and log two over log M uh, cannot be bigger than one over R. Uh, okay, so now since M is fixed and R, R is arbitrary, I can take R as as, as large as I like. So this, this will be true for every R. And so I have shown that uh, log F2 over Fm uh, is equal in the limit to log two over log M. I, I can take limit. So uh, that means I, I have shown that f of m is equal to c times uh, log of m. And c here will be equal to f2 over log 2. Is it clear? Yes. OK, an additional remark. Since f of one is equal to zero and f strictly increasing, that means that f2 is bigger than c. And so that means that c is strictly positive. I have a question, Dimitri. Yeah. Uh, when using induction uh, method or not? When? Uh, if, if you were using the induction method to prove the, the step, or you were only assuming that M was uh, a strictly positive integer and that's all? Uh, no, it, it, here I, I, uh, the induction myth, method uh, is, is used, uh, uh, sorry. The uh, induction method is is, is used uh, is, is used here. So I have supposed that uh, uh, I have shown up to m some m that is like that. 
but you have just proved that no you 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 were not supposing it i think no you have proved this fact uh, no uh, I, 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 I have I, I have proved yes but uh, uh, I have proved this thing here yeah I know I know I, I'm saying that the fact that f of m is equal to c logarithm of oh, m okay Re remove this phrase here ah, that's what you I was right. saying no no induction only uh, proving the you are, you are right you are right you are right you are right okay, okay. okay. thanks Okay, so uh, the third step. Sorry, sorry, I have another doubt. Like, yeah. Uh, can, can you go back? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, this inequality of log two over log m minus f two over fm is a strict because then we are taking. Uh, I, I, I missed your question. Is this is strictly. Minor less than one over. Uh, yes, because uh, 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 you you see one of these inequalities, one of these inequalities is strict here. Okay. Uh, and the same thing. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, never mind. It, by the way, never mind if I take I take uh, non-strict here. The the argument here uh, goes through. If I take non-strict here, nothing changes in the in the rest of the argument. And I'm a bit lost because then you are taking the equality, no? Like in the limit of R going to infinite? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't understand why you can take it equal to zero in the limit of R. Going because to if, if I have that, uh, if I have that uh, uh, for every epsilon positive, uh, some number, a is less than epsilon. That means that A is equal to zero. Ah, okay. Okay, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, prove the third step. So for P, some rational in this set zero one. We shall show that H two of P one minus P is equal to minus C times P log P plus one minus P log of one minus P. <clears throat> uh, maybe to, for the moment I can take open interval here, but this will be even for the closed interval. Okay, uh, so since P is a rational number between uh, zero and one, P can be written as uh, a ratio of uh, R and dash integers bigger than one. And now I have that F of S is equal to H S of what? A vector that will be one over S, one over S, S times, one over s, one over s, r minus s times. Is it uh, okay? Uh, you have to, it's a mistake, no? Uh, r times, no? And um, r, no, no, no. So, no, I, I don't see the, sorry. No, uh, uh, here, uh, here I'm looking at the, uh, uh, Information content in the in the in this uh, uh, average uncertainty reduction of a set of S cardinality S with a vector 
that is uniform in this S. So every everything is S. Is, uh, uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, I have here. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry. You, you, you're right. Here is a. Uh, uh, I was saying that. Uh, and here is not. Is that good? Not good now? Yes, thanks. Okay, uh, so uh, now I use the grouping algorithm uh, uh, argument, the grouping postulate to say that this would be H of, uh, of two uh, R of S, S minus R over S plus R over S F of R plus S minus R over S, F of S minus R. So th this is by grouping uh, 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 postulate. Now uh, I, I use uh, what I have shown in step two to say that this will be H2 of, so R over, over S is just P, this is one minus P. And here will be C P log R plus C one minus P log two of S minus R. This is just uh, just a small computation. And on the other hand, F of S will be equal to C times log S because all this R and S are, are integers. So I can solve this equation for H2. And I'll get that for rational P, this will be C times P log R plus one minus P log S minus R minus P plus one minus P log s, and this is c times p log p plus, uh, minus one minus p log one minus p. So this is just uh, just algebra. I, I, I don't wish to spend the time to do these uh, details. Just uh, uh, write that P is uh, uh, S, uh, R over S. Uh, so uh, once you arrive here, you have an expression now for H2 that is valid for P Russian in zero or one. Now we pass to the last step, P in zero or one, open interval, and arbitrary, not necessarily rational. Now, if uh, P is irrational, then it can be approximated by a sequence of rational spn. So uh, for every such PN, I'll have this equation. And now I use the continuity argument because I have, uh, this is the last postulate, the continuity of LG2. This will converge when, uh, uh, so that means that Pn converges to P. That will converge to H to P one over P because of the continuity of the function H. And by con the, the logarithm is also a continuous function. So by continuity, it will be uh, minus C log P, P, P log P plus one minus P log one minus 
Okay, so let's uh, conclude this this uh, 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 it, it, it remains now to, to, to show a last step, but this step is trivial. So that uh, if X is not just two element, but an M element set with P equal to P1 PM, we have to show that HM now will be minus C sum of PX log PX for X and X. But this again uh, is, uh, uh, is trivial. So uh, suppose that the formula, now, now it's a real induction. So suppose formula, if the formula is correct for M equal to two, suppose that is correct up to M minus one. And then uh, consider HM of P. This will be H2 of Q PM. I'll explain the symbols in a, in a moment. Plus Q H M minus one uh, P1 over Q P minus one over Q plus uh, PM of H1, one. So what I have done here is that I have regrouped uh, the uh, probabilities up to minus one, I call it Q. And so I have regrouped the terms. And so I have here that this will be uh, minus C log Q log Q uh, plus PM log PM plus Q sum of K equal to one minus one, P K over Q logarithm of P K over Q plus zero for the last term. Plus, And so uh, if I uh, do out the, the, the algebra, uh, you see that uh, I get that HM of P will be minus C sum of PI log PI for I equal to one to N. So I have proven this uh, famous formula of sum. I hope that you understood the, the proof of this theorem. Have you any questions? There are some, in some places I, I went quite rapidly because it's just algebra. I, I don't wish to, to, to spend time to do uh, some elementary computations on the blackboard. But uh, have you understood the, the uh, uh, idea of this proof? Also. Sorry? About this other thing. Mm -hmm. the, the whole proof of this, of, of this formula. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I now define. Uh, uh, the uh, so I, I introduce a basic convention that is zero logarithm zero to be equal to zero because logarithm of zero is minus infinity, so you have to define what is zero log zero. 
So I suppose that the convention is that zero log zero will be always zero. Uh, in that case, I have not to, uh, to uh, deal with uh, strict positivity of the vector. It can be even zero for some places. And so the function h of p that is defined in that way, so the sum extends from one to the dimension of p, that means the, uh, the dimension of p will be the cardinality of the set x, whose existence and uniqueness is established in the previous theorem, is the entropy or the quantity of information associated with the probability vector p. So this is a function that we have already seen in physics, certainly. Uh, uh, here we have done a uh, rigorous mathematical proof that the, uh, the uh, function is like that, must be like that. And since this function plays an important role, I just draw here uh, the uh, graph of the function h for uh, dimension equal to two, that means for the cardinality equal to two. And you see that when the, the, uh, the uh, cardinality is equal to two, so the probability vector will be p one minus p. So that will be the probability vector. And in that case, in, in the place uh, uh, one half, this function takes the maximum value that is equal to one. Uh, and this is the maximal uncertainty. So the, when your, your coin is honest, you have a maximal uncertainty and this is the, uh, the, uh, the information content uh, in, in that situation. When P is equal to zero or to one, then this function is zero because even if you, do, even if you don't toss the coin, you know what will be the output. So the, the, uh, the uncertainty will be zero at the, at the edges and there will be intermediate values el, el, elsewhere. So that's the, an important function in information theory and is an important function in physics, of course, because uh, uh, the, this function has a long story. I mean, in almost all computer science books, the definition of H is usually attributed to Shannon. And the, uh, the reality is that Shannon, in his article in uh, 48, establishes for the first time rigorously the existence and uniqueness and the mathematical properties of information. But the formula like that was established in 1877 by uh, Boltzmann and published only uh, 20 years later in 1896. And in the next page, <laughs> the, the facsimile of the uh, of the page forty one of the uh, Boltzmann's book uh, lectures on uh, gas theory, and you see that this this formula appears here in red, uh, uh, and uh, you see that uh, as uh, he says, L. He uses the symbol L. He uses the symbol L to denote the natural logarithm. And uh, so that we should write logarithm, uh, L ln of N1, et cetera. And he obtains this formula with totally different uh, approach. He uses the decomposition of the space space in small boxes. And the, he counts how many microstates are inside every box and he, he uses uh, the uh, the uh, 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 Stirling's approximation for the uh, exponential for the factorial to get this formula. And by the way, uh, this formula uh, or uh, the uh, shorthand of this formula is is on his gravestone in uh, in Vienna in the cemetery cemetery of Vienna. So uh, this was uh, known by physicists uh, three, half, three, three quarters of a century before uh, Sun. So uh, uh, I, I think that uh, this is the good point to stop because uh, tomorrow we can uh, see what uh, the entropy is and you will see two, uh, three, sorry, three different um, interpretations of the entropy. 
so if uh, uh, I, I, I was much slower than I, 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 I thought, but I think that it was important to, to make at least this proof on the, on the board. And uh, so I, if you have any questions, I am in good place. I have a question. Uh, yes? Yeah, uh, I, I saw the, that another actions of the probability of the entropy information, and one of those was instead of using the action one of the monotonicity, uh, some people use the action of um, that the entropy is maximum at the uniform distribution. Are they equivalent? Uh, no, not really. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, ma maximality of the entropy uh, at the uh, at the uniform distribution uh, is uh, essentially a, an output of uh, of this, and it comes here. Uh, but of course, you can uh, you can reformulate the things so that uh, instead of uh, of using the maximality of entropy. Uh, use the maximality of entropy and then turn the arguments uh, in the other in another way to prove the same the same result of course okay okay so there are two main different options no we can use no sorry there are two different axiomatic yes but uh, if you if you take as as uh, as axiom the maximality of uh, of the entropy at the uh, uniform distribution then you, you may change the other axioms also. They, you cannot use the other axioms as I did. You have to modify okay. the axioms, but you, okay. they, they will be, they must be uh, equivalent. The two theories must be equivalent. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Other questions? Uh, before question, Dimitri, can you send the, the presentation of today? To the of course, session? and I, uh, I'll send even the, uh, I can send uh, both the, the uh, uh, the uh, presentation without any annotations, so it will be very clean. And I can send you the uh, the thing with the annotations. To Erika? Yeah. The... So you must send to Erika, which will be put on. The... Uh, I don't know. I can I can send to uh, to to the secretary to put on the. Yeah, yeah, the secretary. We we had an email exchange with her today. Is this SMR three sixty seven something? Is the girl which send you the Zoom link? Yeah, the person who sent you the Zoom link is an yes. ICP secretary, and and I can I can send the transparencies to her. Whatever you want, material you want to share with students, you can send to her. Uh, I, for for me, it's the same. I mean, I, if you give me an address, I can send. Uh, I can send to one of the organizers. Yeah, also, also. Okay, so I can send yeah. to the organizers, and then they, they dispatch yes. to the students. Yes, yes. Okay. We no are problem. updating the website continuously. There are new materials, videos, photos. There's a lot of things so you can. Uh, by the way, the, these transparencies I'll, I'll, I'll use also tomorrow. So there will be additions on this uh, because I have the same set of transparencies for tomorrow, but I have different sets for the other days. But so the, this uh, uh, is not uh, the, the, the annotations stopping uh, 